Hello. What's up? Hey. Hi, Normal everybody. world peeps. Welcome back to Normal World. I am Dave Landau. I'm Cordoba Garrett. And today we are joined by Angela. Hi. And Again. Always, yeah. Look at that. You like that hat? Yeah. I do. I like it. And uh, you may know him from the Drinking Bros podcast. Mm -hmm. Please welcome Dan Holloway. Good evening. It's nice to be here. Oh, do we, do we all get rounds of applause? We all, every time. We've actually never done that before, but we did it today. <laughs> well, good. You earned it, friend. I did, yeah. I've, I've, I've really gone out of my way here. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you brought your, it. You brought yes. your malt liquor? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's a 40 for sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. I like the front. I, I pretend it's something nice, but it's not. We know. It's fine. Yeah. What are you going to do? We'd leave you saying I'd in the green room. <laughs> we could yeah. smell it from here. Went out of business years ago, but enjoy. <laughs> Whose idea was malt liquor? Uh, I can guess. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, how do we make this product that sucks even worse? Yeah, like, what is this? Oh, oh liquor's man. not bad, man. Oh, oh my God. You give it a bad rap, this. man. I can't hear this. Uh, who, wh what are you talking about? It's like liquor? wine in a little, in a, in a bottle. It's fine, man. I'm sorry. It's not like wine. It's like it's like a little it's like a little beer wine. Well, malt liquor. Like what? What one do you it's like? A, what I imagine. Well, Colt. I'll give you Colt Forty Five that I I have drank in much of it. But what else you got? Because Mickey's not. That's so all I've. Good. That's all I've done. Mickey's is I, not. So good. I. It seems like I'm poison, saying this as like a new person. To be honest, as a new person, I'm I've, I'm new to the Colt. You don't like Steel Reserve or a 64, Never tried it. 64 handle of OE? No. But I mean, you know, uh, I, I guess we're it, you're poisoning yourself either way. Right. Well, so yeah. If you're on a budget, may as well. Why not? I guess. You know? I mean, you might as well be sick earlier. Yeah. I'm not sure that you're going to get. That's what I'm trying to get to. Like the physical problems that you get from heavy drinking. I'm not sure it's worse with malt liquor than it is for whiskey or anything else, right? Probably all the same. I'm going to guess it's worse. I mean, I'm going to. I'm not. I'm not. Don't get this messed up here. I, it's definitely not like whiskey. Sure, yeah. Whiskey is top tier, you know, yeah. bourbon or something like that. But, you know. I'm more of a scotch guy. I don't like bourbon. It's too sweet. Although there are some, like, I like rye. I don't like spice. I like rye. I don't like spice. I couldn't really tell you. I quit drinking a long time ago before I had the uh, taste for alcohol. Mm. I was just like, so this works to get you drunk? I'll have some, please. Yeah, that th I feel like that's why uh, people drink beer. It is. Because that's the first thing you're introduced to as a teenager. Yep. And you're just like, all right, I guess this is just what alcohol tastes like. But beer is for poor people. It is. Right? It's just liquid bread that's been, that's left out to rot. It's gross. Yep. Be an adult and drink something nice. That's why I switched to Mad Dog. <laughs> and that's why I would yeah. enjoy some Boone's Farm. <laughs> you guys got to get a Mad Dog sponsorship on the show. I'll do it. I'm yeah. Certainly they're do in that. a podcast by now, right? Yeah, I'm surprised they aren't into it <laughs> by now. Just come down to your it's local 7-Eleven. That's the only place it's available. Yeah, that's true. They're giving homeless people phones now. There's a good chance that Mad Dog... Uh, come on, guys. A lot of yeah. people. It's your time. It's called hobovertising, right? It is, right. <laughs> you could write that off as a marketing expense. So, yeah. It's a boxcar promo. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get started, uh, we also want to let you know, please obviously comment, subscribe, and you can uh, join us at blazetv.com where the code normal oh, yeah. world 20 normal world 20 is now officially back available. They, they said it was, and then we checked, and it wasn't it was for not. a little bit, and we were like, hey, make it happen again. Yeah. So they made it happen again. So you, you guys are in luck. So go ahead and get yourself some MD2020 sleep on the street. Yeah, it does does uh, uh does it work on Mad Dog's site as well? It does. Okay, great. Does. That's as soon as, we, as soon as this is over, it's all I can think about right now. I'm going to go get some. <laughs> it's, del it's delicious. It's delicious. Yell Dave Landau into the clerk's face yes. at the 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. Bring you to a place called Broncos in 1996 <laughs> Detroit. Oh boy, I don't think I need to go there. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, I I I don't know. I didn't I I never liked I don't know. I never got in. I'm glad I didn't get into the micro brew. Mm. I don't like here. IPAs. I, I, that whole I, I don't get the I'm IPA of thing. It, again, IPAs those are like, gross. You're doubling down on what most people don't like about beer, which is that it's bitter, right? Yes. Why, well, who's who is that for? Is that like a manly thing? And they were like all the little hippies, and, and no. they were like, oh, I could make my whole personality. You know what it reminds this, me this of? This is like, look at my IPA. I got it from Deep Ellum. Yeah, it reminds me of all the people I knew in the Bay Area 10 years ago that were eating kale pretending like it tasted good. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you know what smizing is, right? Like you're smiling with your eyes, a model. Sometimes you can tell they're not happy about being there because their eyes don't match the smile on their right. face. Yeah. This is what I saw in the Bay Area for about eight years was it, it's just people eating garbage food and that's what vegetables are. They're garbage. And looking at me i'm like mm, it's so good but it looks like they're getting ready to cry i'm like man this is is, it, this is the life you've chosen i want to go back to vegetables being garbage because you've given me hope 
here I'm gonna I'm I don't want to proselytize here, right? I'm just saying I'm not a vegetable. I like fan. garbage. I, I, like I like vegetables. I like the taste. I like this garbage. I, I like them. I like but, it. I like but here's carrot. here's the point. Animals have they have legs so they can run. They have claws. They have teeth so they can fight. They have a brain so they can think and hide, right? Yeah. Or strategize. Plants only have one defense mechanism, and that is to be un or hard undigestible or hard to digest, right? Unless it's a root vegetable, something growing under the ground, you're probably going to have problems digesting it. So That's what's where you got to cook it? You, you give it a nice little steam, a little bit of sea salt on the top. But if you no, microwave you it, make you lose every all single the one nutrients, better. right? Isn't that the thing? <clears throat> I, I don't know. If I you just, microwave it. I'm just trying to not eat vegetables, okay? I don't know if any of this is even true. Listen, I'm going to go ahead and join just make your <laughs> Somebody who doesn't eat a lot of vegetables, I think you're right. No, it is. It's, it's called a, uh, uh, what is it called? A uh, biodefense something. Mechanism? Bio, uh, yeah, maybe, but it, there's a word for it when it comes to plants specifically. Biodefense something. It's, that's a real thing. I know what you're talking about. I really do. Like, uh, especially so, leafy green vegetables, yes. which you're told you need to eat 14 servings of a day. Like, you're not getting too much out of that. Spinach you can. That's one that you can. Yeah, I, don't I know like the, spinach. Mm -hmm. I, I found out recently that I do, like, I do like plants. I like, uh, like asparagus is good. Mm -hmm. I like broccoli. I like uh, cauliflower is really good. And you can, get, you can throw some spinach in there and just like steam it. That's all you have to do. I eat two steaks every night for dinner. What do you eat with the steaks? I eat a steak, steak, and then I have a side steak. Uh, well, I like that. A good move. Yeah. I enjoy good move. eating steak almost every day, which is where we tend to go eat if we do go eat. <laughs> That's true. I do. I love steak. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really don't even care if we get a side. I just go straight with the steak. I've had a bunch of awkward conversations over the years with wait staff. It's like you're, just, you're in a group of people. It's no, all normal human beings except for my dumb ass. I was like, look, I don't want to waste food. I don't like that. I grew up poor, so I don't want to waste food. Mm -hmm. Don't bring me into that bullshit. Just bring me a steak and another steak that looks exactly like it. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I'm like, sure I promise you, I'll pay for all the stuff you're happen. not bringing me. Just bring me the stuff. They're like, so you want a steak sandwich? You're like, I can't oh do God, this with dude. you, lady. Yeah. It's like a double down, but with steak. It's, yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, you're like, just, just bring me two steaks. Steak bread. Hold the sides. <laughs> uh, man, that is I what I do. Typically. Steaks are delicious, dude. They are really good. Yeah. What's your favorite? Um, you know, it depends on my mood, but go to is obviously a ribeye, right? Right. I knew you were gonna say. Sure, it. Yeah. Or I mean, I I smoke tomahawk steaks a lot. I like a good tomahawk. I like tomahawks too. Like mm. Eric, I, we brought Eric July here, mm. and uh, we went and got steak, and he got a tomahawk, and that thing looked freaking delicious. It was like it's perfectly real nice, cooked. Yeah. It was like oh, I I, I want to learn how to cook some tomahawks. Yeah, it's, I mean, do you, well, like, do you like grilling or smoking? Which one's better? Uh, well, so when I'm cooking steak, I don't really grill. I, don't, I, I, I mostly um, sous vide. S -s -s oh. And then I finish in a cast iron pan. Okay. But smoking, for, for something as thick as a tomahawk, I almost always smoke those. Yeah. Otherwise, it gets a little dicey. Like, I don't want to overcook it, you know? That threw me to a different echelon of food, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. When I was like eating regular steaks on the, on the stove, like flip flip steak. And then we went to smoking steaks, and that was like a whole other thing. I was like, wow, I yeah. didn't know we could do this at home. <laughs> Especially for a thicker piece of meat, because it's, it's so hard dumb. to get flavor into the center of that yes. stuff. Smoking is almost the only way you can do it, really. It's the way to go. Mm -hmm. I need to learn a whole, about, a whole this, lot about What are we even that. talking about? I have no idea. We're talking about steaks. This is a, isn't this a comedy show we've been talking about? It is. About we're talking about steaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I think steaks. it's the end of the day, and everybody's hungry. It's like, oh, oh steaks. Goodness. We're like, yeah. What oh, man, delicious. Well, now you know, guys. Well, we had a long conversation anyway, before you the show. Thank in. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming yeah. today. Uh, go ahead and cook your steaks. Well, we talked about this. Last week, an autistic girl was arrested. Uh, in the UK for saying a cop looked like her nana, who was a lesbian. Let's take a look at the photo of this cop. I don't get it. I don't see it at all. I see a baby boy. That's a little baby I boy. I do not here. see it. I see the woman who played Peter Pan on Broadway. Wait, this is in the UK, right? Mm -hmm. This is in the UK, yeah. That's yeah. a Bobby. Uh, well, <laughs> is it though? Oh, can we not say that? You can say that. Can you Bobby? Not? Yeah, but is there a different, is there a, is there a gender neutral term for Bobby? Oh, that's true. Oh, no. Was it a Barbara? The, the UK, well, she would, would probably get upset be... if you called her Barbara. Right? Yeah, yeah, imagine. It's, it's Sir. Has, has that happened? Has anybody said it, it's Sir yet? It's sir. Well, yeah. if you showed up for a fight or whatever this was for, you end up arresting the autistic girl who, <laughs> who misgenders you or calls you a lesbian? Yeah. yeah. What yeah was with the... like six cops. Yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> they like drug her out of her house. I actually think we have a clip of it too. Oh, let's, let's see. It. Yeah, I need to see this. 
She's got we... autism. Can you just right. stand there? She's in a cupboard. She can't go anywhere. She can't go anywhere. Stand there, Liam. They're going to remove her for what? For your mother? Your mother. Then she said the word lesbian. Her nana is a lesbian. She's married to a woman. She's not on the phone. Look what you clenched in your face. Go away from my teenage daughter. can't take that seriously with no guns yeah Conan i'd be like terrible. you know i'm closing this now <laughs> yeah, yeah. like there's no like you have yellow vests that doesn't scream authority it's just the silly screams. accents yeah you, you you better bring jason statham or somebody british that knows how to fight yeah right. right i don't i don't know that he actually does know how to fight but bring somebody that i think knows how to fight that's british yeah and Alex lewis or somebody yeah somebody who's not just tom hardy little short guy yeah, i would i would Tom Hardy. Him oh, as yeah. Charles Bronson. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that movie, Warrior. Get over here, you fuck! Have you seen that movie, Warrior? Great movie. Oh, man, it's yeah, the best movie. fighting movie since and Rocky, I think. Totally underrated, yep. and yeah, all heart. Yep, it's yep. a good one. At any rate, this is crazy. Yeah. So, the she, fact that you could be arrested for calling someone something, anything. Is nuts. Especially when it's top. so spot on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that's the problem. Yeah. It's like, you you should have been like, okay, we get it. We understand. <laughs> but it's a yeah. lesbian. Yeah, that's right. I mean, not to say that she was, but I guarantee you. Uh, yeah, I mean, she has, there's a look, certainly, right? Yeah, she looks a bit like, what do you call it? A woman who has sex with other women. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't want me to think that look is lesbian, then why did all lesbians decide to look that way? That's not, I didn't make that decision. Yeah. No, you all were like, we want this haircut because Ellen did it. <laughs> and we're all very nasty at our jobs. Yeah. Well, she wasn't wearing the Birkenstocks and driving sure, a Subaru. Yeah, she's in uniform, so... She's in uniform. I don't know. I guarantee you she's got granola on her somewhere. Probably in a little baggie in the fucking... On the belt. On the belt pocket, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I just don't think they have real police. What? Unless you have guns and you have some sort of authority. They've got sticks. Yeah. <laughs> they do? They got the well, old the nightstick. Nightstick, yeah. Yeah, but you got sticks in your house. I'd be like, all right, you got a stick. I got a bat. Well, they took away all the guns from all the civilians. So we know that they don't have guns. Do they have guns? No. Cops, They're though? They're called tings. Did they you get it? Tings? Tings. tings. What do they shoot? What? Tings. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do have... Uh, Are you a father? Uh, no, I'm not. No. But they do have guns there. They just don't carry them to, on patrol. And if then they, when you, if, you do, like a... if you do have a weapon, if you're a police officer in the UK anywhere, including Ireland, if, you're, if you have a weapon, you have to announce yourself as armed police. So you have to announce yourself differently than if you're not armed, which seems like maybe it puts you at a disadvantage, right? Mm. If you're trying to make a drugs bust <laughs> or something like that, and you're like, uh, poli just regular police with no guns... Everybody's like, yeah. chill. Like, when get you the come fuck in, out of here. One guy. I'm an armed cop. And they're like, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so are we. Swiss yeah. cheese a dude. Congratulations, dude. Oh, I like the, uh, uh, let's go to the Irish cops are armed there. <sighs> he did a good job in Detroit. Yeah. yeah no <laughs> it <shit>. worked. <clears throat> Doctors in Miami, uh, it was in a suburb, are giving peacocks vasectomies to curb their growing. Did you know that? The growing population. <laughs> like vigilantes, oh, they're going yes. out there. Not their penises. Not growing. their penises. Uh, yes. Yeah, so wow. Giant peacock penis. Uh, is this like a mandated thing by the government there? Or is it a Miami problem? Or is it just literally vigilante veterinarians going out there just like chopping? Danny Bonaducci jeans. <laughs> Dudes peacocking around <laughs> trying to get ladies wet. Yeah. I, so, so who's what is this whose shit? idea was this, and who's paying for it? That's what I'm saying. I would assume the taxpayers. It's like, oh. listen, guys, we're gonna we understand there's a lot of crime going on. We're gonna get rid of these peacocks. We're gonna stop them from breeding. We actually have a picture of one of the peacocks getting a vasectomy. So yeah, you can see that okay, right yeah. there. Well, wow. they're nibbling it. It's in a it's in a nice facility though. From what I understand, I was imagining on the street, like they were finding the peacocks on the street and just snipping them there. The like, peacock, they're, they're, they're taking like, them back like to Batman, the, just that's what I'm saying. Open yeah. them and then hanging you know, off yeah. the top of a, of a building. There's one there. <laughs> How quickly can you cut a, a peacock's dick or whatever they're doing? I don't know it's pretty doing. majestic. Yeah. Like you're gonna be looking at it for a while, like a trance. Yeah. Well, I would. So if if this was my show, we would have a peacock dick on the screen right now. Right now. No, I don't think this is. I don't think we're allowed to. Can we yeah. ask Jeeves that? No. <laughs> <laughs> can we ask Jeeves a peacock dick? This is just for looks. It he doesn't actually. Work. I imagine <laughs> it's like the duck dick that is a corkscrew. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Is that how all bird no. dicks are? No, just ducks. Just uh, ducks. Do I don't just do ducks bird. are freaks. Do all uh birds have dicks? I don't know. Birds have cloacas, right? So what's going on there? Ooh. Well, not all birds because some birds are are female birds. So at least half of them <laughs> don't. 
I don't know birds. Okay, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that. Is that an ornithologist? That's a word, right? Is. That sounds like a smart word you just said. Studies uh, birds. Yeah, that sounds like a something. terrible life. <laughs> oh, man. Like Can you, you just, imagine? Just, Have you ever met one person that's super into birds that's not a fucking weirdo? No, and isn't no. a pedophile? Yeah. Are you even allowed to like birds if you're not a weirdo? No, do, I think, do you show up to the meeting and you're like, sorry, bud. It's you. just a cover for being a weirdo. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I'm bird watching. I got binoculars on me for, <laughs> I like birds. It's like how parents used to call their kids uh, uh, artistic when they were gay in the 80s. Yeah. It's, oh, he's just cover very... For that, yeah. He's very, he's a little feminine. Yeah. He's, he's showman. He likes to put on a show. And everybody's been like, that's a red breasted Robin. And you're like, I don't, I don't care, oh, Uncle Lou. Weird. I want to know why you're alone and why we're, a, why you want me to keep taking these baths. It should have been a red flag. It should have been. Red thing, right? <laughs> why is your crotch always so itchy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was a guy who loves birds that lived near us and he was a pedo. That's why I, uh, I, Tied it to that. He always had like birdhouses, but then there were cameras in the birdhouses by the park. And it's like, you know, no birds at all. You got to check those. <laughs> I'm watching the pigeons. You got to so, check those, uh, check the FBI data for overlap there. I think you might be onto something. Yeah, that's true. They're, they're all agents. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is that birds aren't real group. They're pretty funny. Oh, God. It started off as a joke, and then yeah. people started believing it. I talked to a guy in... Oh, Chad they're all, in, like, sorry, robots, right? Yeah, they're, they're yeah. robots. I talked to a guy in Seattle, and he believed it. Oh, like, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have yeah. you seen all these birds with cameras coming out their eyes? Man, I've seen it. Like, he believed it. He's yeah. like, yeah, their eyes. Yeah, they it's... say when they're, like, on the line that that's when they're recharging. <laughs> like, why would they stay on the line if there's trees and stuff? Like, that's You have that have kind of technology, and Texas can't even fix its energy grid. Are yeah, you kidding on. me? That would, that's what would make me mad. I don't care about getting <laughs> spied on by the birds. I care <laughs> that you prioritize that bullshit. But why have phones or anything else at that point, then? <laughs> I don't know. You got freaking robot birds, man. That, that would be a good encryption. Just you speak into the bird and throw it out there, and it flies right to your target. Well, birds have flown into my home and into my car, and the stuff that comes out is not screws <laughs> and wires. <laughs> it's very much a living creature. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, you sometimes see them dead. They get you, man. That's how they get you. Not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah they put enough r real birds out into circulation. <laughs> well, that's true. It's like squirrels. Not all of them are robots. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I exactly. look. I'm not. We know a, doctor, a good portion so. are robots. I'm not a veterinarian, <laughs> but I do know that a lot of squirrels are robots. <laughs> what? How? It's like flat Earth, and people probably get mad that I'm talking about. Fuck that. that. <laughs> people, <I'm> sorry, <laughs> but fuck no. that. But some some random dick on 4chan made up a story about how the OK symbol is white power. Of course, yeah. And, just yeah. And it, it isn't like it caught on pervasively throughout throughout some community or another. The government, the United States government, yeah. believes it to be true and is trying to. F they fire cops for it all the time. They yeah. prosecute people mm -hmm. for hate speech for it. Are you kidding me? We just made it up. You can't even make stuff up anymore. It's too dangerous. Or something that Buckwheat did, which is yeah. just something of the OTA. Yeah, yeah. I like, don't know. no, that's what like your parents used to say, like, yeah, yeah. that's okay. But now it's just a white. I just did that, so that'll be a meme. <laughs> mm. But yeah, it'll just turn into that. Well, I, and then people try to cancel other people, and then you go back through their photos, and you're like, well, you did it. Yeah. Beyonce, you did we, it. We live in the dumbest period in human history. Absolutely. I think. Uh, I and uh, you know. We have all the information that can ever be available to anybody, and we're still dumb as shit. I wonder if, if it's have... because it's so read, readily available, we it's so easy to get. It doesn't yeah. take effort to sure, go yeah. get. We don't have problems solving skills anymore because we don't have to solve any problems. Right. But, yeah. Well, you just look it up and tell people how you're right, and you're like, yeah, I know. I also have Google. Yeah. yeah this yeah. isn't a conversation anymore. It's just you being a, a dick. <laughs> I also I need to apologize because last week I called the saws reciprocating saws, oh my gosh. and they're not reciprocating. They're circular saws. Cause those I had a feeling. I You guys... No, I, I don't know. You're talking about the saws that are inside of the buoys? Inside yes. of the buoys. Yeah. Yeah. No. They look like yeah. circular saws, not reciprocating. And when I did the motion reciprocating back and forth, I was correct. So I'm not... When I... Uh, saying, those are designed to keep us... Shop yeah. class. Yeah, yeah, that's what I really I heard mean. that too. Yeah. It's not for the people outside. It's for us. <laughs> well, you know, Europe is requiring... Um, the EU, at least, is requiring that you essentially do a soft background check now before you get a visa to come visit there. Mm -hmm. Like, really? That's what I saw, yeah. You're being overrun by African migrants right now mm -hmm. and, and little old ladies that are going back to their home country. That's the problem? Yeah. Those are the ones that check. That's what you're worried about. Everything they sneak in the guns, man. The AR-15s, they put them in their little blouse. I feel like if you're that old and you can get through everything, then you, you, you earned it. You know what I mean? You take yeah. the plane down, you earned it. 
Of course. That old lady, she was going out anyway, so, you know. If you take a stewardess out with a box cutter and you're above the age of 75, you're a hero in my book. I don't yeah. care what team you're on. Yeah. I mean, at least you, it, it, even if you disagree, you've got to respect the effort. It's That's what like, I mean. Separate the artist from the art. Look, yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying, game respects game. Yeah. I'm not saying that you should do it. Yeah. Like, Let her go out the way that she wants to go out. Sure, yeah. The way that most old women do. Yeah. yeah, they mostly it's murder-suicide. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's or, how. or fentanyl, like Betty White, I think, died of fentanyl. Oh, big time. But, she was 101 years old and yeah. truly strung out. She, I mean, you, you should have seen her yeah. in the last couple of days. Well, her it stage was name was White. <laughs> 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 the bitch love Coke. She did. So who, who doesn't? I mean, you know. Those were the days, man, when everybody on TV did coke. All the movies the were better. All the TVs were TV shows were better. There's, no, there's no way Andy Kaufman exists without cocaine. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. And there's well, no way SNL. Mm, early, no. early decades, man. Now, the problem is when though it got to the eighties and everybody was just up all night with nosebleeds and they were <laughs> like, All right, I got another made for TV movie. And we're like, this should slow down a minute. <laughs> You're like, how many times can Meredith Baxter Bernie be punched in the face for lifetime? Apparently a lot. A lot. I um, mean, some of the titles of those movies are very creative. They're the best. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's like uh, somebody that works in copy editing that finally got their break. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out clever ways to say that a woman got her ass kicked. Yes. Essentially, it's... And it's basically like, my husband still hits me for... <laughs> <laughs> this time it's personal. <laughs> yeah. See, I would watch that movie. Sleeping with it sounds like a nice revenge six. tale. <clears throat> she's got a six shooter. She's going yeah. through. Yeah, going back to her uh, hometown. Look, it's never that. that. That's why I'm looking never forward that. to uh, Passion of the Christ too, right? It, and it's people, Electric pe people think, yeah, exactly. People think that it's going to be about the resurrection and everything. No, it's a, Jesus is coming back and he's fucking pissed, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Full on machine guns. I can't wait. Jim Caviezel in another action movie that's going to be looking forward criticized, to I guess, by everybody. Yeah, because uh, it makes so much sense that he would release a movie about human trafficking and it would upset people. Yeah, man. You know? Is it, don't, don't you find it the, one of the more odd things going right now that people are so butthurt about that specific movie? Mm -hmm. And when, you know, in the past two months we found that there's 85,000 missing immigrant children in right. the United States. So they come... Through Border Patrol, go to ORR. There's 85,000 of them. They, they get sent to a sponsor who might be a relative. They're not vetted in any way. No. Sometimes 7, 10 kids are getting sent to the same address. Unlikely that they're all in the same family, but who cares, right? right. 85,000 of them are just missing now. Yeah. We don't know where they are. So we, we found a couple recently. There were 500 in Alabama, ages 12 to 14, working at a Hyundai factory. Yeah. So that's dope. I mean, at least, you know, we're getting something out of They're it. They're working. Can't call them lazy. It's absolutely disgusting, though. I mean, that's uh, but the 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 attempt by this admin and the media to pretend like it's some kind of conspiracy theory when it's been going on. There's 45 million people mm -hmm. in slavery today, right? Yes. Yeah. On and for the people that hopefully. that usually say that they're, I'm a bleeding heart <clears throat> liberal. I'm trying to save the immigrants, and we care about them so much. To call a movie that's produced, acted, uh, written. Mm -hmm by Latinos and Hispanics about an issue that affects specifically their countries to call that conspiracy. It's, I mean, we, we know it's all hypocrisy, but it is like the most blatant version of that. Well, they also use real footage. Yeah. <laughs> That's the part where you go, Oh, so it's not at all a conspiracy with all the real footage intertwined yeah. through the entire movie. I'll tell you what though, when I watched it, I felt very comfortable. I was uh, sitting at home on my miracle brand sheets. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know if that was the best way to segue into this commercial. Uh, I don't know. But I hear Miracle <laughs> Brand sheets are comfortable. I, I, I use them as well. Do you? I'm not kidding. Yeah. Do you? Awesome. Too. Yep. They're really good though, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And I had never had them until I got them and they have like the cooling properties yeah. that make you feel nice and cool. I think it's bamboo. If is I'm that not what it is? Is that what the so. self-cleaning? Because I don't understand yeah. how they're like self-cleaning. Like what is the they wick, science behind it? They but it, do, it doesn't absorb That's things. Cool. Yeah, I think. It, it like repels... Mm -hmm. The sweat off nasty. of you. Okay. You know how I often how wake up magic. with meat sweats or like <laughs> I eat like four ice cream cones before bed no. and my night terrors, I wake up screaming. Oh, sure. I didn't yeah. serve like you. I just do. Well, look, I mean, it's I think it's important to keep your family on their toes yes. anyways. And I often I often uh, fight Charlie in my dreams, <laughs> but I was not a <laughs> oh, yeah. numb. Well, he's you out there. He's out there getting stronger right now while you're That's what I'm saying. You're getting softer. I'm practicing in here. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to relax with a nice pair of luxurious and comfortable quality sh 
sheets. Really? That's what I do. So what they are is they're designed for your skin. You just go to trymiracle.com slash normal to try them. And I'm serious. He's serious. They are very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go over today, you get 40% off, which is actually good because they're not very expensive anyway. I got them. I really don't want to promote things that I don't like, so they will give them to us first. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> yeah. well, we'll see if it actually works. Their bath towels are really good, too. I use I them. I used them, Really? Very good. Yep. Interesting you should say that because if you use our promo normal at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. I'm telling you, they're really good. It's one, two, three. Yeah, I'm not joking. One, two, three I, of us in here. I didn't know yeah. if I'd like them or not, and I am a hot sleeper. Yeah, same. Me too. Yeah. And if you're a lady, their hand towels are super soft. My ex used them to like wipe, wash her makeup oh. off at the end of the day. That's all she would use. Dude, I'm down. I'm telling you, they're really good. Go there, get them, try them. If you're angry, go ahead and hit me up. You can use code normal, like I said, to claim your free three-piece towel set. And save over 40% again. That's trymiracle.com slash normal. Treat yourself. Come on. Treat Do yourself. It. Soft. Do it. Do it. Put it on your body. All right. I got to wake up a little. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a little. <laughs> it's just because I was comfortable sleeping in those sheets. Yeah, it, it'll do it. Yeah. Hey, Dave, you know what will wake you up? Told the FBI you. killing people. <laughs> oh, the yeah. FBI killing you. So, yeah, we mean another like 75 year old. Do we have any details on this raid wanted. yet? <laughs> What's that? Do we have any details on this raid yet? I know the guy was 75. He did have a weapon. I, that's the. Of course the, he had a weapon. That's the first. Yeah. That's the. Most latest thing that I've seen. I mean, I hear all. Let me, let me. It was. it was last week. Just, just a little background on that. If you're making threats on the internet and you're making them in the uniform with the weapon, you say that you're going to mm -hmm. use. That's a little. That, that might be a bit much, right? Just call Biden an old piece of shit. Yeah, it's different. It's, right? a different, yeah, it's yeah. certainly yeah. frowned on because I believe you're not allowed to say that you will kill the president. Is that uh, correct? Sure. It's like a threat. Yeah. Yeah, which I, I but but it has to illegal. be to to be illegal. It has to be there. There's a couple of uh, legal precedent. One of them is Brandenburg v. Ohio, and there's a couple other ones. Um, it's like it's got to be something that you can actually do, right? And then you have to be very specific about a, a single person or group. So if I was tra you couldn't be charged with incitement or threatening somebody with terroristic threats. If I said like Dave, I'm going to come to your house and drop a nuke on it, right? Because I, I don't know. It's ridiculous. Nuke, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> but if I said I'm going to come to your house and use this gun to shoot you in the face, mm -hmm. now I've committed a crime. That's assault, technically, right? Right. So, so probably don't do any of that stuff, I she guess. She said to me in the Is that what he did? Several times. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it, uh, actually, er, earlier today, um, I think CNBC did an article about that uh, last Thursday. Yeah, it was yeah. <laughs> so last Thursday or today. Uh, uh, news just bleeds together. Whatever day it was, know. yeah. It was um, about how the guy was on True Social talking all kinds of shit. Okay. Threatening the president, uh, the DA, Alvin Bragg in New York. Who, I mean, that's enough to best bust down his door. I mean, in yeah. fairness, he probably thought he could on Truth Social. Sure, yeah. I mean, but they, really. that, that was the story. CNBC was trying to out yeah. Social for reporting somebody threatening to kill the president. I don't know what they expected to do. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, but... Yeah, that's that's kind of silly. I don't know, but it, usually, what when that happens, when somebody makes threats like that, the FBI will call, literally call them first. Like, hey, you're talking a lot of shit. Maybe don't do that, and then they'll set up a meeting so the person knows they're coming, right? Instead of just kicking down a 75 year old Air Force veteran's door. Now he's yeah. he's probably a kooky knucklehead making threats like that. Sure, but, but is it really anybody? A threat? Yeah, but I do you need like to like execute somebody for that? It's cuz what if what they do you show up to your house and bust down your door? You don't know what it's at for. 6 it, 6 o'clock in the morning a reasonable person yeah. is going to know that that guy's got a gun right next to him and that he's going to pick it up. And then you're yeah. just going to you're using you know exactly what that situation is is some I've done many many raids in my life. I know exactly what that looks like. You know what I mean? You know for mm -hmm. a fact what's going to happen when you go in there. There's no now, element now of Now how have you done raids as uh, somebody who served? Or as a police officer? Uh, I've never been a police officer. I didn't think so. No. So I just, but as, as in service. Yep. Yeah. And then, you know, after. Yeah. Just for, just for fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know that, but I mean like just, yeah, just <clears throat> for the heck of it. Yeah, yeah. But like when you, when you do go into a house, obviously they are going to try to shoot you. They're going to have their weapon nearby. Of course, yeah. So you're so. essentially just going in to murder somebody at that point. If you're the... FBI, you know that, right? Right. Like, you know that this guy has made threats. Mm -hmm. um, so you do, we, we call it a tactical call out, right? You stand outside of his house, like, hey, with a bullhorn, like, hey, come out here. Don't bring your guns or we're going to shoot you. Bring him out. Then you can go in and serve your search warrant. You don't need to, he's a 75-year-old guy. You don't need to kick the door down. 
he's not running anywhere. He's not a, he's not a flight risk. You know what I mean? That, so yeah. like the, the purpose of no knock warrants, which I, I think should be banned federally. That's nonsense. Yeah. There's no reason they should yeah. exist. overreach. Yeah. But the purpose is to catch them underwears. Like what, what, how do you benefit from that? Exactly. Yeah. When the whole point is to search mm. and find out if the reasons that we're suspecting this person for and to have a conversation with him right so he didn't I, i've read this stuff he, he's the things he said definitely warranted a visit there's no question about that we, we have some of those can we show those? yeah we do uh just some of the statements that he made online yeah. there we go perhaps utah will become famous this week as the place a sniper took out biden the marxist now this is not technically a crime no no so, so far as i could tell from all the things i've seen so far None of them are crimes, but they are, they do, they would warrant a visit. Certainly yeah, it, it, it's services. a roundabout way of saying it, but it definitely would have somebody talk to us, especially in this day and age. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. He also suggested someone assassinate Hunter, which I think we also have, yeah. So know. is that a crime because he's suggesting somebody else? Yes, that is a crime. crime. Yeah. Okay, so the fastest and most effective way to assure Joe Biden will pull that off the screen before I finish reading it <laughs> is have a new guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Effective way to assure Joe Biden will not win in 2024. Assassinate Hunter. He'll drop mm, right no, out. No, that's not a crime. Because he's no, not saying, I'm going to go do it. Right. He's saying, yeah. it has to be very it direct. Happened, it has to be, okay. uh, it, it has to be, you should go out and kill this person or, or attack this specific group. Or it has to be, I'm going to write an action verb. Um, he's making a statement like, or a, a speculation. Yeah. The one way you would do it is that. Which is stupid. Which is right. not, you know, I don't it's agree not, with it. It's, it's certainly not clever, and it is going to have some, it's going to result in somebody showing up at your front door. So what's you think the he, they, he was used as an example? Because, like, like you were saying, why else would you just yeah. surprise somebody that you know has guns, that you know might respond in a certain way? Well, I don't know. I mean, Ruby Ridge, Waco, it, it's, it's, we, I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't believe gunfighters when they say that they went into a situation not expecting to get into a gunfight. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's just, that's not real. Especially when you have a tank with you like Waco. Yeah. You're like, we're probably not going to use that. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case. We yeah. I mean, we just brought a tank. Fire. Yeah. Which they used to use to go into houses in like Compton and stuff in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> it seems a little aggressive to get through a front door. Uh, yeah. I think it's interesting because it, it, it does. There's such an issue with freedom of speech starting to dwindle a bit in this country where they are taking uh, broader and broader uh, strokes to get us away from it, or at least uh, they're, they're doing more egregious things. Yeah. One of those is yeah. definitely going into your house and gunning you down for something that you may have posted. Yeah. yeah. And I don't see how that's not making an example of somebody. It it seems like that's kind of the point. I don't know why else would you would you would do it. You know, I mean, it's to scare the crap out of everybody else, isn't I, it? Yeah, I think it's. Make I think an it's. Example. It's all. It's all part of, you know, what Chomsky called manufacturing consent. Right. The last stage of manufacturing consent is where people begin to self censor out of fear of retribution, fear of violence, fear of judgment, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's the last step to get so you. The last to, ten years of America yeah, to yeah. invade your mind so much that you're like. You know what? I I believe that, and I probably should say something. But if I do, I'm going to have to deal with all this bullshit. So I'm just not going to do it. And that is the that that's like the laissez-faire thing from conservatives and libertarians that have gotten us into the situation we're in today. Yeah, live and let live is nice, you know. And it's but it's just as delusional as utopia. It's just yes. not how fucking life works. If you don't lock the door, somebody's going to walk inside. No, it's very true. That's why you have to do it at your at your home. Hmm? You start with yourself. You protect yourself. You lock your door. Mm -hmm. You you prepare for the worst case scenario. Yeah, we're also living in a. That's time what they where, want you to not be able to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're also living in a time too where people aren't as concerned with their own home as they are with what everybody else says. Everybody else does, and that's how you're able to attack, get people to attack each other and start going at each other's speech. <clears throat> and that's what I think is becoming more and more scary is the fact that, like, yeah, I don't think you should necessarily be online saying stuff like this. Yeah, but I mean, you do have a right to. Mm -hmm. They that's part of it. And and yes, they can come talk to you because it is a threat. But I mean, ideally, this 75 year old man is never going to have access to a guy who's barely seen in public. Anyway, he ran his whole election from a basement. Yeah. yeah. If you're able to find him and do that, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. But realistically, it's nothing more than to scare the crap out of the rest of the country to think, OK, well, if I ever kind of it's the same as if you say 
said anything the last three years against a group of people, you're afraid of your job being lost. Mm-hmm. You're afraid. So it, it's a lockstep thing out of fear. Yeah. That's it's, it, it's communism. It's dictatorship. It's fear. It's every way that a culture shouldn't be ran because nobody's being honest anymore. Yeah. But it's the same kind of aggressiveness or authoritarian uh, bullshit that comes from a position of w- relative weakness. Right. Yes. So the gut, the power of government, the power of aristocracies, it's like Tinkerbell. It only exists if we all believe that it does. Once people stop believing in and fearing the government's power, then it goes away. Right. And then the government gets upset. It's like sand going through your hands. You're trying to, the, the harder you try to grab onto it, the more that slips through. So they have to do these demonstrations of power from time to time. Well, there's so many of us and so few of them, and we forget that. There's a great story about that. Um, Man, I can't remember where I read this. It was in some first century historian's writing, but he was explaining how a Roman senator was talking to a slave trader, and the slave, they would buy slaves routinely from this guy. And the, uh, he, he said, why do you take the collars off when we sell you the slaves and brand them instead in a place where you can just see it on their arm or something like that? Why do you take the collars off? And he said, if we left the collars on, then they would see how many more of them there are than us. Oh. Right. That's a really good point. Yeah. And, and that's really what it is today, is mm-hmm. you constantly fear the thing. And you're being trained to with your phone, TV, everything, that you're always being watched. <clears throat> but you're also being watched by people who are equally as guilty, mm-hmm. equal, if not more so, equally as hypocritical, or equally as... They're criminals. Yeah. And I mean, that's really... Uh, what needs to be exposed more and more and, and everything that comes out, I mean, you even look at it through Trump, you look at it through whoever they go after him for all these various things, which is odd to me. Cause that just keeps it him completely more, you know, it's like free advertising. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You keep going after somebody like him who like it or not, he was an outlier regardless mm-hmm. of if he is a billionaire or whatever, he does have power. There's no doubt about it, but he was an outlier and clearly that shook a system. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, any, any, I mean, think about that. It, it's so Julius Caesar was not born rich. He was, he was born a pleb. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Pompey was born into, into the purple as they call it. Right. Right. That's what made Caesar so dangerous to, to first century BC Rome is that a regular dude rose to power to become the most powerful person around. That's, that's a threat to an aristocracy. And I'll tell you this, forget about sides and politics and all, and, and this side or that side or whatever. The aristocracy will protect itself before they'll protect any given position. Always, they'll protect. They'll they'll circle the wagons and protect. Like Epstein, why there? If if there, there's not one member of Congress, either house, who's really trying to find out what happened with Epstein. No, because they would find out. You you have that ability to do that. It's like the cocaine in the White House. Or yeah, yeah. It's well, like, we don't know. We yeah. can't find out. There's no way to figure it out. It was mine. Well, I'll tell you how. And I want it back. Uh, yeah. you send it back, please? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how you can prove that, too. They found a 75-year-old man and shot him in his house in about 15 minutes, and we're yeah. still going, like, I'm not sure who left that Coke in there. Yeah. 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 Might have been the Coke head. Yeah. But- why, is it, why is it the 75-year-old man that they go in and kill, and they never talk to or, hunt, or, or like, investigate the school shooters? They're, they're always on that list. Mm. They're like, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, We're looking the, into them, but uh, the majority of school shooters have had contact with both police and the FBI in a lot of cases, right? But they just, they're like, oh, they that's... They like write them off? Yeah. They just, I don't know, uh, you know, whatever. They just go SSRIs. Yeah. yeah. Son of a gun. Yeah. There, there it is. Well, enjoy a prison. Yeah. We, we should probably do something. Yeah. You know? I'm not good. I'm, there's a lot of things that need to be changed, but I don't know if anybody's... I mean, you made a point we were talking earlier where you talk about a weak society. We are, we are a weak society. Yeah. I mean, we're being trained to become weak. We're being trained that masculinity is wrong. Mm. We're uh, the food that we eat mm. is, is is garbage. Garbage made to make you slower and dumber. Yeah. How many? Uh, you you should look up the phrase endocrine disruptor, and then look at what food products have those in them, and and look at how many of them are a part of your everyday life, mm. like things that are killing your testosterone. The average twenty-one-year-old in America today has 40% less testosterone than their counterpart 20 years ago. 40% less. Seriously? Longe- yes, sir. That's detrimental. And that, again, and that's, that's putting your I populace... didn't feel like I had that much 20 years ago, and that would have been my age. Yeah, well, 
I had a lot it's of worse it. now. It's way worse now. Well, watch that, TikTok. That, you could that, find them. Yeah, that's why. I mean, there, it's no wonder people are having uh, what we call gender dysphoria, right? Like right. your hormones are fucked. You don't know. And then you go through uh, uh, puberty and it's like, okay, I still didn't get it worked out. Mm -hmm. Now what? You know what I mean? And you have these weirdos telling you, they're like, oh, that's fine. You're just not buying. Like, no, you're not. Everything in life is binary. Are you binary or non-binary? Oh, I'm non-binary. Okay, well, so that's one of the two. You're still fucking binary, jackass. Right. That's how it works. Well, binary is just your existence. Yeah. (laughs) Is that really a way? I, but it is weird, right? How, you know, whomever it is, maybe, maybe it's just circumstance. Maybe this is just how it goes, right? When we take our eyes off of things and, yeah. and, and call it what you want, bureaucracy or mission creep or whatever, but <clears throat> the, or, or maybe it is something more conspiratorial, a concerted effort to control the population, but whatever it is, the institutions that protect us are under constant attack mm-hmm. from Policing and the military all the way down to masculinity itself is all under attack and the institutions that are positive in, in society. Why? Like if, so, if somebody, we call this battlefield preparation in war, right? Like if I'm getting ready to invade a country, I bomb it first, take out some key military. I, I fuck up the things in that country that protect it from me. And then I go in. You're preparing it, it. Yeah. Which we've watched happen in this country for years. Yeah, decades. Well, since the 1950s, probably. Yeah, we've taken away families, Mm -hmm. the idea of family. We've taken away the idea of health, nutrition, education. Yeah. uh, Culture. Patriotism, uh, morals, church. And I'm not saying that's necessarily what you need, but I Mm -hmm. think you can see that uh, taking away a certain moral ground that people have. Mm -hmm. A connectiveness of, again, culture. It's it's destroying that culture. And we talk about that in... And the other podcast about the culture of like pop culture, you destroy that pop culture cohesion and mm-hmm. the, everything that you, you call yourself an American and you go, I think of these things. They've destroyed those things. They've separated all those. Yeah, I wonder along if Along with all the other things. I wonder what the, if you just, in one word, tell me what it means to be American or tell, tell me what America is to you. And you just mm-hmm. make a word cloud out of that. I, w- I really would be curious to see what the left and right or ambivalent people would have to say about that. In what decade? I would like to see in the 90s or in the 2000s what that was and what it was in the 70s and what it is now and how much that has changed and separated. And I I think that most people in America, and this is, again, like light, right and left, are going at the same problems and want to fix the same things. We are disparate on the way that we want to get there, mm-hmm. but I think that we want the same things. We want... We don't want animals to be in factory farming because that's a bad scenario, and and the left wants that, and the right wants that. Mm-hmm. But how do we get there? And I yeah. think a lot of the times, the on the left, it leaves itself open for that evil to come in and kind of gank it and use that yeah. as a as a way to get more power. Well, le- left, I think it's like more of like a availability of sure, yeah. Le- leftism will always trend towards authoritarian just because it has to. It's a weak position, right? So it has to. Yeah, it's the only way they can maintain, but. Yeah, it's a, it's uh, the what you're talking about is our collective epistemology, the 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 dictionary, the the list of words that we all agree on the fucking meaning of, and that mm-hmm. doesn't exist anymore, right? Like we we just we aren't on the same page, so you can't have a conversation about stuff like that anymore. Because who like I, I say uh, equality and you say equity. I'm like, all right, man, well, I it's just, not the same. I it's, thought we were is, both on equality. Yeah. We were on equality. It was like the the left was calling for equality, and then all of a sudden they switched it to equity yeah. and pretended they never said equality. Well, you know what that is. That's that. There's a simple answer to that, and that's because solved problems don't get out the vote. That's uh-huh. why it's right? not exciting. Like everything, any kind of social issue or political issue will eventually turn into a business, and that business has to perpetuate itself. That's what businesses do, mm-hmm. right? So th- think about um, like. I think everybody was pretty clear. Nobody gave a shit who was gay anymore. So I, I didn't they, know. They, it was they, a, yeah. So they had to like bump it up a notch, yeah. right? After we keep, killed my cousin, discussing. no one cared. Yeah, yeah. We got rid of the problem. Yeah. No, no more. <laughs> no more. Right. Uh, it, it's but nobody cared, and then so then they have to rekindle that. Everybody. So that's w- why I became oh, trans because uh, yeah. It, well, that you had to you have to find another. Mm. No, sorry, I mean interrupt you. But I don't yeah. know. But pe- then people of all races started getting together. Like, no, we can't have that. Yeah. That's that's not fair. So then you, 
you take uh, a very complex issue and you distill it all the way down into the reason you're not successful is because of how people think about and treat your particular race. Like, that's not true. Of course. And I think for a long time, people realize that. Mm -hmm. But then you're training a whole new generation of people to have this anger that was supposed to be put to rest, or at least we yeah. were attempting to put to rest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we got pretty far. Like the the 2000s, at least for me when I was growing up, I it felt like there was a lot of integration mm -hmm. and there was a lot of uh, other, yeah. just acceptance of of, of other races and yeah. other cultures yeah. and stuff. And then we, uh, I want to say like, oh, thanks Obama, but once yeah, yeah. Obama came in, he started that whole race engine again. Mm -hmm. And it got worse, and it seems to have gotten worse. We're also American, which is something that well, I thought we were all we were looked at by the rest of the world, regardless of what we want to think of ourselves as African, Italian, Irish, uh -huh. black, yeah. whatever. Mm. We are American to everybody else. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah, yeah. There's. I, I promise you, if you're a black guy and you grew up in America and you go to Africa, they're not going to be a fan, bud. No, they don't. They don't you're not going home. Very different. They, no, it's, it, they, they, they do not like you. Uh, it's, and it's, you know, in out group bullshit. That's just how it goes. But yeah, it's, if, if you notice anybody trying to divide you, there's a reason the phrase divide and conquer has existed for about 4,000 years now in some form or another, and mm -hmm. because that is this basic strategy, right? If you want to conquer something, you divide it into groups. If you, if you want to heat up butter faster, you cut it into cubes to make more surface area. That is how physics works, right? It's how society works. And it's done through gaslighting now on small scales. It's done through all sorts of things on small scales, yeah. through businesses, corporate America, whatever that is. But it's also done in this very grand scheme where how do you think the, you know, the aristocracy stays where it's at? It's by getting everybody else to fight over everything. Sure, yeah. You always have to have that out there of sexuality, politics, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, to keep everybody angry. Yeah. And then you have to, it, no matter. And, and I think the problem is, is the second that people start to see somebody else's side or do kind of listen, mm. that's when they have to introduce a whole new poison into it to start fighting about yeah. it. it. It's uh, there's this old anecdote called who shook the jar. Right. If you put black ants and fire ants in a jar and sand together, they will build separate communities or sometimes integrate, but they'll pretty much ignore each other for the most part but if you shake the jar up they will attack and kill each other but mm -hmm. they never they, they they never stop to think about who shook the jar in the fucking first place right? right and that is what that that's the trick of the aristocracy it's when you control media especially it makes it particularly easy to do stuff like that yeah and it's what seven companies yeah and for how long was it less <sighs> man i don't know i mean uh, for it was three for long time long time like, until the 80s basically and, of course, there was an agenda being served you. I mean, you mm -hmm. kind of look back and you go, okay, Walter Cronkite, Dan Rather. But now when you look at it through less rose-colored glasses, you realize, okay, there was an well. agenda. Yeah. But it was a trusted name in news. Mm -hmm. It was a newsman. You believed him, and now you realize yeah. things are changed. But now it, they just tell you what side they're taking, mm -hmm. but you choose it. And you go, okay, well, everything this person tells me I believe, and this is what I think because this is what they tell me. And that is dangerous. Uh, I blame Walter Cronkite for all of this. Well, I do too. Like he, taking a position on Vietnam, he was correct. Yes. But taking a position as uh, an impartial news guy was a mistake. It was a journalistic mistake that he made. And that, look, it's not all on his shoulders. Obviously, corporate media was going to become what it was regardless of him. But it did start there, in my opinion. That's where it all started going downhill. I was just saying I kill his house pets, but I get what you're saying, though. And he was a sex symbol as an ugly man as well. <laughs> Which is pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, That's so a good con job. congrats on that, I guess. That's the good thing about being a newsman in the 60s and 70s. You could wear a uh, like a, a wool suit all the time. Oh, yeah. Sweaty. Yeah. Not hairy. camera friendly. Hairy and sweaty, yeah. Really hairy. And just, just getting trim. And do you remember when pilots were like the thing? Oh, yeah. Like you could just walk around. You were like celebrities? Yeah, you were a celebrity. And now you what? see a pilot, you, you're like, you're, my fucking flight better not be delayed, dude. Yeah. I swear to God, I'll stab you. And if I have too much shake, they get look in, at you. Yeah. They get in front of you in the line for security, and you're like, who do you think you are? <laughs> a pilot? <laughs> I paid for my seat, sir. Yeah. Please. Yeah. You can wait behind me. <clears throat> I pay your salary, pal. <laughs> and then they... They, yeah, remember to just be like a, a a pilot walking with like six Pan Am. Oh yeah, dude, that was what sick. happened to Pan Am. Do you remember the old commercials for him too? They're like, we will weigh all of the stewardesses before we bring them on the flight. You will never oh. ever make eye contact with an ugly woman when ordering a drink. Pan Am. Oh, your that's a great advertisement. It worked. Well, yes, yeah, you could smoke. You could have like a long three course dinner. 
Oh you yeah. You ever see those ads that you you see a Pan Am that like they have a full on freaking turkey and they're like carving it. Oh in, yeah. In the plane. Yeah. Was that real? Was that ever real? I don't know that. I don't know that it was ever real. I think well, maybe it's all a big con, man. Like we're in a simulation, and they just keep showing us old videos. We're in a loop. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I think at some point they did have some good turkeys, and then they started the plane hijackings in the seventies. Like, and they were like, we got to get rid of the carvers. They keep using it on the sky waitresses. Did you Did you see that? Uh, there was a flight from Baghdad to Dubai. Okay. Right, last week. I can't imagine this one awry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's not what you think, actually. <laughs> okay. um, they had two bears on. And <laughs> one, of the ba- one of the bears got loose. One cup. One of the bears got loose, so yeah. they had to... They had to trank it. I think it's still alive. But it was like a bear and a cub that was some for some reason was in Baghdad, which I can only assume some rich dick uh, yeah. owned it, right? There's no yeah. other reason for it to, unless it's joining Al Qaeda or something. Never uh, which know. Who knows? I don't know much about bears. I know that there's a lot in Russia that gets sold mm. around Europe and the Middle East to rich people for pets and shit. It's so, like tigers in America. Yeah. There's more tigers in captivity in Texas. We found this out. Than there are in the entire fucking world. Vindicated. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that weird? We called this and I was crazy. <laughs> he told me this. Just the two of you. I, I was Texas. like, there is no way oh, at all that that's yeah. true. One got loose in Houston a couple years ago in the suburbs. Just let it run. See, that will happen around. in Detroit, too, where they're like, there's a panther out. And you're like, I don't believe you. And then, oh, it's a black panther, though. Yes. So it's, it's just a guy. Yeah, it's just a guy with a gun. Your name Huey. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I didn't believe him at all. I'm like, that can't be accurate. And then we looked it up and it was like, it was insanely accurate by a lot. I think there's probably, uh, there's probably something there, an iron law about Texas. The more ridiculous the thing somebody says about Texas is, the more likely it is to be true. No, I've learned that. Absolutely. There's a lot of weird uh, shit going on here. That's why I love Texas, man. I, well, Florida's well, like that. We too. all know. Yeah, well, te- Florida, Florida is Texas. Love you, Florida. Meth and a beach. That's, yeah. you know. Yes. Which is nice. I like that. I like, I like that meth. Too. I like beaches. Come on. There's nothing wrong with yeah. either of those things. Oh, no. no not never, intrinsically. Never hurt anybody. It's how you use them. Yeah. A couple of alligators here yeah. and there. If you get the alligator meth, the teeth fall out and you get yourself. Oh. What did you hear about the, There's down. cocaine sharks oh. down there, too. Apparently. Yeah, in Miami. That's one of my favorite things of all time. And the mayor just. Suarez, yeah. Yeah, she was fishing and just happened to catch herself $1.1 million. Dollars worth of coke. Why are all these animals getting coke? Where's all this coke come from? Like, why are they? What, what's the? Well, where it's, it it's from? traffickers trying to use those little shitty submarines. Have you, have you seen? You, sure, you've seen that video on uh, social media of the Coast Guard guys going into a submarine. Yeah. He's like banging on the top of it. So they use those to try to tr- to mule stuff over. But they like it. They they go. They use Logitech game controllers, right? A lot apparently like the on submarine these, on these submarines, and they just don't work. So then you there's a billion dollars worth of cocaine floating around. I feel like I've never found investment. Any of it. No, I've never been swimming and found cocaine. I've been deep sea fishing a lot in my life. Not one time have I just seen a giant bale of cocaine out there. And I feel like maybe I've done something to upset someone. Yeah, you're also not the mayor of Miami. Uh, who also used to be a, the drug czar or whatever. Like eight years. You know. yeah. Well, you know, they did it. So scientists in the area did a test on these guys. So they put, they wrapped up bales of not cocaine okay. and threw them into the water. And yeah. the sharks just attacked them immediately. Really? They're used to it. Yeah. They're, they're, Addicted to cocaine. And they're just is, walking around. Like, they're swimming around. They're like, that's yeah. just baby powder. So it, like, yeah. it kind of reminds you of uh, the first X-Men movie, right? Yeah. Where Magneto is trying to use that thing to turn everybody into mutants. But they're just getting... They, they're, we're trying to accelerate evolution now by giving cocaine to sharks. <sighs> and at some point, there's just going to be sharks with... Sharks? Like, bears? Like Doberman pincher legs. Just coming after you. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, God, they were fucked. There's nothing you do about that, right? Are you going to yeah. land shark? Everybody's worried about AI and shit. No, it's Mm-mm. it's sharks. I'm not afraid of sharks because I'm never going to get in the water and be in their territory. Yeah, but, but if, if they, they have got, legs... If they got legs and coke, you don't even you don't live anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, you might have to sit there and listen to them talk about world peace for 45 minutes yeah, or something. I mean, is, they're going to be pretty chatty. By the end, you're just like, dude, bite me, please. Yeah, I got to get out of here. Did all huge noses. Do, yeah. It's going to go on for a while. True, yeah. Uh, they're going to be up all night. <laughs> Speaking of all night, you can see me at Zany's Comedy Club in Rosemont, Illinois, August 18th and 19th. And also you can check out my special at prison10.com, available now for a limited time. Go get it. And Garrett, what do you have? I am on Friday Night Tights on the Nerdrotic channel and on my personal channel on Sundays where we play video games and talk about whatever we want to talk about. And on Mondays at the Adam Krigler show, Bay Staff. A lot of people. We have fun. Yeah. And of course, we can see you on Drinking Bros and hear you up. And where else can we see you? Uh, I have a show called Citizen as well. Cool. That I do. It's uh, the premise of the show is you can either bitch and moan about your rights 
and wait for somebody else to secure them for you and you will be a subject under their rule because that's how that works. Mm -hmm. yep. Or you can secure them yourself by performing the responsibilities required of you as a citizen and you will be one, right? That's how yeah. it works. And then as well, we this is uh, football season now. We have a company called Hard AF Seltzer. It's an 8% hard seltzer because, you know, we like to get drunk. Hey. Uh, yeah. And it's uh, we're doing a bunch of events for that. Florida will be, let's see, the F Labor Day weekend will be in Miami and Orlando. Um, if you're a football fan in Alabama, we'll be at Tuscaloosa for the Texas at Alabama game on the 9th. And then nice. if, you're, uh, if you're in Indiana, we'll be in South Bend for Ohio State at uh notre dame on the 23rd of september as well no one drinks there uh well i, I will be yeah not in south bend yeah. not for the fighting irish no you don't think so <laughs> no I, so <laughs> not their culture yes, all they do is drink and, and have rudy what else do you do in, no, yeah in indiana it's all you do is drink <laughs> go to a national park maybe i guess yes. I, don't, I don't i honestly <laughs> don't know anything about <laughs> <Nothing>. Indiana. <laughs> those aren't there at all it's like it's one of the dakotas but it didn't quite make it yeah, it's, it's so the, the kind of cut it out. They're like, it's the Michiana area <laughs> border, actually, and it is pretty much just bars and uh, Notre Dame. Well, that does sound kind of up my alley. I like yeah. bars and stuff. So it's, you can enjoy it. Yep. And if you like the movie Rudy, mm. you really because like who it. doesn't? Uh, that's a guy who uh, hectored his way onto a field. I feel. I think he was offsides. Yeah, I. I think. <laughs> No offense. No, I personally I think Rudy, Rudy yeah. it's like, why don't you do what you're good at and stop bothering the football team, Rudy? <laughs> I don't care if the janitor is Charles S. Dutton. Ru Rudy is kind of like, uh, he's kind of like Johnny Cash. I know everybody loves Johnny oh, Cash. Okay. I like his music too, right? But he stocked that, he he, he took meth, basically. And yeah, speed all the time. And, and the stocked time. this poor woman for a decade this married woman that he was on tour with for a decade until finally she was like all right fine dude let's just do this yeah. and then you're an all black great but he's, he's playing the, he was the first emo. game he was the first emo but his music's great so he gets away with it yeah, yeah. and when she died he died very shortly after just so he could follow her into the after yeah he, he's <laughs> then it starts a whole other 10-year process yeah she's like dude i thought I was, people we were done and he's just still stalking her <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming in. Yeah, anytime, appreciate yeah, it. More anytime. serious chat today, but we need them sometimes to let people know. Do I like to have the more you know a little laid back talk about some stuff sometimes? You but do a little of both. You do some com comedic foreplay, talk about some serious stuff, and then you Meats. call everybody's hero an emo guy. Well, yeah, that's how we exactly. do it. That's yeah. what we do. I, we get it. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash had some great songs, and he also Didn't? had some crap. Oh. Like I, I myself, I'm a Johnny Cash fan. Oh, I love him. And I, it's yeah. it's like saying I'm a Jerry Lee Lewis fan. I'm not a fan of a lot of stuff that he did on stage, but I think just his personal life is great. It's it's <laughs> just hard to fascinating. Yeah. live up to that. I mean, to just honest. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Elvis. <laughs> yes. God, love the children. All right, everybody, have a good night. Bye.